Hello, my name is Sebastian van der Velde and this is the second part of our video series here on Touch Plus where I will explain what you need to know to get started with Pixelmator. In our first tutorial we got familiar with the Pixelmator workspace and for this tutorial we will be diving deeper into a very important part of image editing which is making selections. Pixelmator comes with a variety of selection tools. The most basic ones are the marquee tools. You'll find them in the tools palette over here. The rectangular marquee tool and the elliptical marquee tool over here are ideal for making quick selections. When we activate the elliptical marquee tool, we can draw an elliptical selection by clicking inside the document window, holding the mouse button and dragging the mouse to where we want our selection to end. After releasing the mouse button, we can move the selection around by clicking inside it and dragging it to the desired place. Let's take a look at the tool options bar. This is the bar at the top of the document window. If you don't see this bar, please go to the view menu and choose show tool options. Going back to the tool options bar, we see different modes for applying selections. The one that is activated now is called for create a new selection. When this mode is selected, we will create an entirely new selection every time we click and drag with the mouse over our image. To the right of this mode, we find Add to Selection. This will let you make new selections like before, but previous selections will not be removed. Let me show you how this works by selecting Add to Selection mode and draw another circle to include the stem of the apple. Next up is Subtract from Selection mode. And of course this mode does the opposite of the Add to Selection mode. So when we make a selection around the stem again and release the mouse button, a part of the original selection gets removed. Finally, there is the intersect with selection mode. At first, it might not be quite clear what this means, but basically it lets you select a part of an already made selection and removes the rest. I will demonstrate this by drawing a selection only around the bottom part of the apple. When I release the mouse button, you will see that only the parts of the previous selection that intersected with my newly made selection are kept. If you quickly want to switch to Add or Subtract mode, you can also hold the Shift key while selecting to activate Add mode and hold the Option key to switch to Subtract mode. Holding the Shift and the Option key at the same time activates Intersection mode. We also see a little gear icon on the Tool Options bar. When we click on this icon, we get more options for our selection tool. Deselect removes the selections that we have created. And when you get more familiar with Pixelmator, you will most often use the keyboard shortcut Command plus D to deselect your selections, instead of going to the gear icon menu. Inverse selection deselects what is currently selected and selects everything that wasn't selected. So let's go to our document and demonstrate how we quickly can select the hands in our sample image by first selecting the apple. Activate New Selection mode from the Tool Options bar. This will make sure we make a completely new selection and remove all the selections at the same time. While drawing our selection, we can constrain its proportions by holding the Shift key. So when I press the Shift key now, while still drawing the selection, we see that the shape of our selection gets constrained to a circle. When I hold the Option key while drawing a selection, the center of the selection gets placed there where we started to draw. So I can also start my selection in the middle of the apple, and while dragging with the mouse I can hold the Option key, and my selection will have its center in the middle of the apple. If we hold the Shift key at the same time, we both get a centered selection, and the shape of the selection will be constrained to a perfect circle. Back to what we actually were planning on doing, and that is selecting the hands. Let's include the whole stem in the selection of the apple as well by holding the shift key and then start drawing a little elliptical selection around the part of the stem that wasn't included yet. Now we have made a selection around the apple. But what we wanted to do is selecting the hands. To select the hands we click on the little gear icon in the tool options bar and choose inverse selection. It's not directly visible at first but if you look closely at the borders of a document we see that the marching ends, as they are so cleverly called, are now visible here. We can now do some image editing on the parts of the image inside the selection. 
What we're going to do is desaturating the color of the hands. We find the desaturate option in the color adjustment section of the effects browser. If you don't see the effects browser, please go to the view menu and choose show effects or press command plus 3 on your keyboard. In the effects browser, we choose the color adjustment section and when we scroll down a bit, we will find the desaturate option. Double click on it to apply the desaturation effect. As you see, since we only have selected the hands and not the apple, only the hands get desaturated and not the apple. Let's take a look at another selection tool, the polygonal lasso tool, which you can find in the tools palette over here. With this tool, you can create straight lines by clicking on a starting point, moving the mouse and clicking on the next point of your selection. You see that straight lines will be made between each point. We close the selection by clicking on the starting point again. The polygonal lasso tool is perfect for when you want to make detailed selections where the other selection tools might fail. Since the polygonal lasso tool creates straight lines between each point, the resulting selection isn't very smooth. We can refine this by going to the edit menu and choosing refine selection. What happens now is that our whole image get a red overlay except for the part of the image that is selected. The refine selection window shows and here we can refine our selection by adjusting the sliders. Smooth smoothens the jagged edges of our current selection and feather will blur the edges. We will most likely use the feather option in a later tutorial but not for now, so we'll set it back to 0%. Size lets us adjust the size of the selection. And when we click on OK, we get back to our new refined selection. Let's change the color of this unnatural looking apple to a more natural green. If we would do this now, we would also change the color of a part of the stem, since it is included in our selection. What we can do is using the polygonal lasso tool, in subtract mode to remove the stem from the selection. But since we are learning about the selection tools in Pixelmator, we will use another selection tool for this job. It's called the Paint Selection tool and can be found over here in the tools palette. Our mouse pointer changes to a circle. The diameter of the circle can be adjusted in the tools options bar. This can be safely set to a size that is smaller than the stem. So we don't accidentally include other parts in our selection. Next, we have to make sure to set the selection mode to subtract mode, of course. And since this is a detailed selection, I would recommend to zoom in quite a bit so we can clearly see what we are doing. So to quickly zoom in, we can use the key combination Command and Plus several times. Now we can click on a part of the stem and hold the mouse key. The part that the paint selection tool wants to select for us is displayed in an overlaying color. By dragging the mouse we can include more into the selection. But as you see already the paint selection tool in Pixelmator is so clever that it already knows that we want to select the stem, based on the color. When we release the mouse button we immediately see that the stem gets deselected and we are left with the selection around the blue part of the apple. Let's zoom out again by using the key combination Command and Minus. To change the color of the apple, we are going back to the Effects Browser and in the Color Adjustment section we choose Colorize. Let's double click on it and see the effect. We can use the little button here to rotate around the color wheel. Since we want a green apple, we can put it on green and if we increase the saturation slider a bit, we get a more fresh green apple look. Another tool we can use for selecting parts of an image is the Magic Wand tool over here. The Magic Wand tool will try to select parts of an image for us based on the color shades we tell it to include. Let's select the lower left hand with the Magic Wand tool. Again, make sure to set the selection mode in the tool options bar to new selection. Now we click on a part of the hand and drag the mouse away. An overlay appears over the parts of the image that are going to be selected. Release the mouse button when all of the hand is included. As you see here, there is a tiny part of the hand that didn't get included. We can quickly include it by holding the shift key to switch to add mode 
and click and drag with the mouse on the excluded part of the selection to include it. To remove the hand, we can hit the backspace key on our keyboard. We repeat the selection process with the magic wand tool on the lower right hand as well. And delete it by hitting the backspace key again. Also note the layers palette. If this was a document with only one layer and we would have deleted the hands, we would have ended up with the hands being replaced with transparency. Just like if it were hands cut out from a piece of paper. You will see this when I hide the white background layer. Here we see the familiar checkered pattern, which means transparency. And since we have the white background layer underneath, we won't see the transparency. Next we are going to select the remaining hand as well, by using the magic wand tool. Only this time, we don't want to delete the hand, but copy it onto a new layer. To do this, we can control click inside the selection and choose copy and paste as new layer. When we look at the layers palette, you see that a new layer was added containing only a copy of the hand. Let's deselect the selection by pressing Command plus D. From the edit menu we choose rotate 180 degrees. We are going to move the hand to the lower right by selecting the move tool from the tools palette. Now click on the hand and we move it towards the lower right. If you had snapping activated, the hand will snap in place at the right side of the document. You might like red apples better than green. In that case, I can show you another method for making a selection. We are going to select the apple again, but now with the help of the Select Color option from the Edit menu. Before we choose Select Color, make sure we select the layer from the Layers palette we want to select the color from. And this is the layer with the apple. When the Select Color window opens, our mouse pointer changes in a sort of magnifying glass and zooming in to our image on pixel level. With the help of this magnifying glass we can choose a color we want to select. In our case the green of the apple. Now we can use the radius slider to determine how much shades of green we want to include in our selection. Now we have selected nearly all the green which is perfect. Let's find the colorize effect again in the effects browser and apply it by double clicking on it. Increase the saturation to create a perfect red apple. And we are done. We've used several selection techniques available in Pixelmator to select and edit various parts of our example document, resulting in this beautiful image with two hands and a fresh red apple. You can download the example document from the website, open it in Pixelmator and go through the different selection methods yourself. I hope to see you back for our next tutorial. In the meantime, take care and have fun with making selections in Pixelmator.